uh, my little Lola. So I'm over here today because I'm currently pulling out the wiring harness for this thing because remember we went through it and it was kind of junky. Um, and there's still some engine stuff on here that we have to get off because we're not going to be using some of that stuff because, or most of that stuff because we're going to be using the LS harness. Um, we'll still probably keep relays and stuff like that. I already have the truck harness apart at home. Um, so I'll kind of show you already like a uh, quick version of that because I'm going to have to lay it down over the actual uh, engine plug connectors in and kind of tape it up like that. There's a great write-up on uh, lt1swap.com. That guy does a good job. And there's also, I think it's Michigan Motorsports that sells like an adapter harness if you're going to do a standalone truck harness. We'll talk about that when we get there. Um, so yeah, pretty much I'm just yanking this guy out. This, this thing had a bunch of weird stuff in it. I'm just happy to go through this, at least for now, because this thing's got like this uh, junction block, which isn't bad, but... I think they relocated the battery to over there, um, but it's just too much going on. There's too much stuff in here. We're going to try to clean it up a little bit to make this mess a little less bad. Um, and I think on this, the body harness is separate from the uh, engine harness, which is great for us because we don't have to touch the body harness like for like the headlights and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get this out. And then uh, probably once I get a pull apart or whatever, I'll bring you guys back and show you what I got going on. Hang tight. I'm sorry, but wiring is boring, so this might not be that long of a clip. You know, all this stuff. So I got most of the connectors out and everything. Pretty much every, all of them. There's a separate, looks like AC harness on there, which is another cool thing. I'm pretty sure my Camaro had all the AC, heat, headlights, all of that was in one harness. This Firebird looks like it's all separate, so that works out great for us. And I'm a big fan of just taking stuff out instead of just cutting everything. Obviously, you just see me see, cut that, but that was something that was definitely added. So if you can take the time to do it, do it right. Jeez. 80s electronics people <laughs> 80s electronics but I'm gonna tell you right now you got a lot more connectors on the modern day stuff oh boy I know it looks rough okay but it's not that bad. Um, it looks bad, but it's not. Um, so, I uh, this is the 5.3 harness that I am making into a standalone. Now, I decided to pull all the wires out of it and stuff like that. Like I said, there is going to be, there is a great write-up on lt1swap.com. You follow that, guys, to the T, and you can make your own standalone harness. It is time-consuming, whichever way you decide to do it. Um, I could have went with a standalone harness from, you know, Amazon. They're like 140, 150 bucks, but they are cheap, chintzy Chinese wiring. I don't like, I just don't like that. You get what you pay for in this state or in this country and everywhere else, honestly. Um, so I am making my own standalone out of the factory ECU. And I also bought, it's from, I'm pretty sure it's called Michigan Motorsports, um, if not, I'll put a thing down at the bottom to uh, correct myself, and I'll put their link for this actual product in there. They sell a um, like an extension harness to the factory harness, so if you make your factory harness into a standalone, it gives you a fuse block, so you don't have to use the factory fuse block, and uh, you know a whole wiring and a whole diagram and on how to hook it up, and it's actually pretty simple. Um, so if you could follow directions on both ends of it, you should be able to figure this out. It just takes time, but at least you're not putting your hands in cheap Chinese junk. So the only way I can figure out to get this harness back to normal, 
because I pulled a lot of wires out of it and stuff, stuff that wasn't needed, you know, like EVAP stuff, EGR stuff, is thankfully I have the 5.3 on my house. And uh, what I can do here is actually just plug connectors in, driver side injectors, whatever, whatnot, map, map sensor and all that kind of stuff, and just get a kind of idea where this stuff's going to be at. You know, so we can tape it back up, and then once I get it taped up somewhat, I can take it back inside where it's freaking warm at, because it's cold out here, um, and tape it all up. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set you guys up, and uh, we're going to get to hooking some stuff up. Oh, boy. So I didn't do a step-by-step -step with this just because there's a lot going on, and like I said, that lt1swap.com is a great, great area for uh, you to get this diagram and figure out how to do this. Me, I've done wiring for a while, so I kind of uh, have a pretty good understanding of it in most aspects, so I just went to town on it. And you get stuff that just keeps twisting together here, so that's great. All right, y'all, so we're starting to get stuff. Eh, okay, we got our injectors on the driver's side plugged in. We got throttle position sensor, IAC plugged in. This is still kind of a mess here, but just take your time while you're doing it. Follow your diagram, follow your descriptions, figure out what you got and everything. And uh, um, how I figured out the injectors is because obviously you got one, eight, right? Or one, no, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Odds on the driver, evens on the passenger. So one, so you go to your injector number one, find out the color of that because there's only two wires on these connectors, a power and then a signal. So we're going to go to number two injector is green and black. So we have to find which one is green and black, which looks to be this one. So this would be number two. So we're starting up front with this one and then just probably so on and so, so forth. We could just look at number four so that we know we got the right color. Injector four is blue and black, which this is blue and black. And then we got, we're looking for injector six. Injector six is yellow and black, which is this one. Looks like it's yellow and black. Sometimes I can't figure out how to get these in there, but if it's in the vicinity, it's going to work. Okay, so we got a nice clip out of that. And we got our last one in. So that's good. So, like I said, just take your time. Start where in certain spots. So obviously you know that if, you know, you should know if you know LSs at all or anything like that. You know that the injector harness is right along with the actual coil harness. So that's going to be running with this guy. Always. That's going to be always on your, uh with your injector harness. So you know your coil is going to be, your coils are right here, so your coil connector is always going to be with your injector harness, whatever side it is on. Um, definitely, obviously, make sure you've got your drivers on your, your passengers on your passenger and your drivers on your drivers. Because I don't know if there's anything, issues with it running and stuff like that, if you have those mixed up, but just make sure that they'll save you a step. But we still got all this we got to go to through. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go to the point of undoing this all from this harness. We're just going to kind of make it into one um, and try to follow it. Uh, my map sensor was cut off and it made me sit here forever and like kind of look for it. But I ended up finding it, thankfully. And thankfully, this uh, intake has the map sensor connector in it. So I could take this in. I could just tape this together. Um, and uh, solder that too there, so that works out great. So we got some connectors that have to go to the back of the engine here. This is, I'm pretty sure, your alternator. And uh, we've got other stuff here like your cam sensor. Um, I'm pretty sure... I thought we still had an oil pressure sensor in here. That might be in this conglomerate over here, but uh, we'll find that and uh, we'll get all this stuff popped on. All right, y'all, so still kind of spaghetti, but a lot better. Um, I got a lot of stuff plugged in here, and honestly, a lot of stuff routed um, kind of differently than, obviously, the factory would do it. We got some stuff tucked down here and everything like that, so it would kind of be out of the way. 
up onto the intake. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be better than the factory was. Um, so all I got left are like these, these are like range sensors. It said I had to keep them, so I still have them. I don't know if I really need them or not. Um, I think we're going to take each one of these as far as like I did with this OBD2 sensor going towards the back. I did the same thing for like the knock sensor and stuff. I ran it all down through under the in, like intake and injectors. Um, but we're going to kind of do the same thing because I'm pretty sure this goes to the passenger side header. Um, and uh, yeah, run that stuff to like down through back here so it can hopefully maybe reach. Um, if anything, we'll, we'll have to get an extension harness, which isn't a big deal. So I'm going to wrap up uh, plugging everything in, kind of taping stuff up. I'll set you on a time lapse here. You can check it out. Also, honestly, as of right now, this is kind of as good as it's going to get. We got both of our uh, O2 sensors hanging off the back, uh, routed through the injector here, obviously. This isn't permanent. We're going to get this taped up. Um, our knock sensor, we're going to have it probably... I wanted to have it run down the center here, but we may be able to run it through the back with these guys. Like how these are and then have it come off and then actually uh maybe come through the back and it's just hard to, and we may have to go through the center just because like maybe wrap it around and then come back to the center and then go down because we have to get behind the starter with that so for our crank sensor i don't know if i keep saying knock sensor but i think it's crank sensor anyway um we got all our cam sensors and stuff routed through here also, so taped up somewhat, just at least to get it to the point of where I can pull this thing off now, take it inside where it's warm, and tape it all up. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll show you guys, guys, I'll show you guys the uh, finished result. So y'all, I'm out here in the garage real quick because I'm sitting there thinking like, well, you know, my the Firebird's at my grandma's, which is about not too far but i'm not driving there tonight and i'm like well the irox engine bay is the same as the firebird so um i got that standalone harness done as far as the truck side is and i got the uh this um fuse block from michigan motorsports in so i'm just kind of trying to figure out maybe where i want to mount stuff um so on the 5.3 if you've seen in the previous section where i was kind of like taping stuff off and everything the actual ECU connectors and stuff kind of hang off of this way. So this is the driver side of the engine. So obviously, <clears throat> it's going to be like the same thing in here. So what I was thinking of doing, or I may just take it to my grandma's and do it. Yeah, I haven't decided yet. Was just kind of laying the 5.3 harness over the small block. Because in real terms, that's kind of a small block too. So it's going to kind of almost lay the same. And I thought about mounting the ECU like down in here and then this is the actual fuse block that you get from michigan motorsports so it's got a relay two relays on there and some fuses one of them's an ignition relay the other one's a fuel pump relay and then like a fuel pump fuel pump fuse all this other kind of stuff so this side this left side is oh boy this left side the red the gray and the pink the pink and black is like an ignition keyed ignition with like hot and run um, and start, I'm pretty sure. And then you got just this red wire that's for a positive battery connection. And then you got a fuel pump power to the fuel pump relay, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I figured I'd mount this guy back here on this back wall in the Firebird like this. And then I could probably run this red wire over to like the alternator terminal, which will work. 
and then uh the all these other wires are for like you have to make these connections to your the actual ecu harness so i figured if that harness is right here and we have it mounted here boom we could bring those right to there and that's going to work pretty well um and then we'll have easy access to our uh fuses and stuff up there um nowhere like under the dash or anything the only thing i was kind of worried about was maybe more of like the weather getting to it and stuff like water and rain uh if anything i think the hood covers it pretty good so i don't know if anything we'll have to put like maybe a cover over it or something like that in the future if we see problems coming from that um but i think that's where i'm gonna mount it so in this next section here you'll probably see me either with the harness out here and the ecu and stuff and mount it like that and see where it goes or we'll be on the firebird i don't know yet depends on how long i want to be out here tonight so i'll catch you soon all right this is going to be a little confusing here when you first look at it pretty much what uh we're looking at is i've got this fuse block in here and i've got the actual 5-3 harness laid over here to where it kind of would be on the 5-3 so these all these pink wires here one is your 12 volts ignition for your driver side coils and injectors and then same thing for your passenger and then there is also a 12 volt for your o2 sensors and math sensor so what i did was just kind of figure out where i kind of want these and tape them together and to, you know kind of where we can get them in a loom all together so they look somewhat decent and uh but if you and i did the same thing because you have an ignition a battery 12 volt here that comes from that fuse block and then to the ecu there's also an ignition 12 volt that comes from there and also a control for your uh, fuel pump so but they give you this a whole booklet on how to do this um if you know basic wiring you can figure this out you just start from the beginning this is how i kind of started so where i said we had those o2 sensor 12 volts and uh, mass airflow 12 volt that's where I, this is where this would go in your sensors 20 amp on this first list here. So I have that tape to that wire, just the actual pink wire. And then I went down one, that bank one, that means your driver side, right? Yes, your driver side injectors and coils. And then next wire down, bank two, passenger side coils and injectors. And then you got a pink with white stripe, PCM ignition. And then it's that's obviously used for ignition power to the PCM. And then you've got orange battery, PCM battery. So that means 12 volt battery to the ECM, which we have hooked up. And then the fuel pump is uh, dark green with white stripe. And that goes to your fuel pump control uh, relay control. So that's on the ECU actually. And that's why you can find that if you're actually building a standalone, it's in there. Um, and then the other two wires are ground wires, which I have them hanging over the side because we could honestly tape those together crimp them in a and like an eyelet and then ground it somewhere so um we could probably run that to the back of the cylinder head so this is kind of just a, a brief description of what this is and then i'll probably have it in the firebird try to trim some of it up and get it pretty decent and then kind of show you what i got going on so i'll catch you when i am at the firebird all right so we're on the floor of my house here um because it's too cold outside to be doing that um a bunch of wiring at least so this is kind of how we got it here like i said i kind of taped all these together to where they'd possibly line up somewhat decent in the car um if we got a little extra slack then we're just gonna tape them up and tie them off we're not building a sema car here we're building a car to get it running and possibly a drag car or whatever if that so got this one wire going in for this wire is actually for the mass airflow and o2s Going into the three wires for that, one for each O2, and then, um, or two for, one for each O2, so there's, yeah, whatever. And then one for the mass airflow goes into that. I soldered them. You could use any, they have those solder sticks now that you can use and stuff. Um, I know how to solder, so I did that, and I got a nice piece of heat shrink, so I will probably heat shrink this and tape it, just to be sure. So I'm going to get all this done here, and then show you the finished product. All right, y'all, so we got everything connected here, um, soldered, heat shrinked. Um, like I said, these one set is our mass airflow sensor and our O2 powers. Other one is uh, driver side um, coils and injectors. Next one is passenger coils and injectors. 
Um, this orange one is a uh, the ECM battery power, and then the pink ones are ignition power to the ECM. Then you also got this green wire with a white stripe that goes to the green wire with white stripe to the ECM for uh, your fuel pump trigger. So that all connects to there because there's a fuel pump relay on this on this actual uh, relay and fuse block here. So the other loose harness, you got a fat red wire, a gray wire, and a pink with blue stripe. The red wire is going to go to your power, just like battery power, straight to the battery or wherever you can find it. But I'd say go straight to the battery or maybe to the back of the alternator. Um, your gray wire is your fuel pump. That goes to the 12 volt power output of the fuel pump. So it says this circuit will be need to will need to be connected to your fuel pump positive. This circuit is a 12 volt power output from the fuel pump relay to your fuel pump. You will ground your fuel pump to one of three places, the chassis, engine, or battery. So that kind of gives you a description. And then that pink with blue stripe goes to a fused ignition power. It has to be a 10 amp fuse, not a fusible link, a 10 amp fused ignition power. So you hook that side up and you really should have power to this whole harness and the ECU. So they'll also give you this OBD2 connector with six wires in it. It'll have an orange wire, a tan wire, a tan and black wire, two ground wires, which are black, and then a um, dark green wire. Now, if you're using this with, so let's start from the beginning here, and orange is battery power. This circle will need to be connected to the PCM and ECM battery. So I solder this a little late, but what I can do is just splice into this and connect this to the actual uh, battery power here. It's not going to be a problem. And then that'll allow me to actually run this in the, in the car and wire it and leave it inside the actual car. Um, and then your dark green wire goes to um, your, P your blue PCM connector, cavity 58. That's a serial data. And I already have that marked here, um, which is this wire right here, which works out great. Your tan and then your grounds just go to wherever, you know, ground them to the engine harness. Um, the tan and, tan and tan black wires are twisted together. Those are only used in Gen 4 applications. So if you're using a Gen 4 setup, you have to use the tan and black and not the, green, the dark green wire. If you have a Gen 3, which I have, you have to use the dark green wire. It kind of says that in the actual instructions there. So... I don't know if I'm going to end this here or not. You may have an outro here this next setup um, because it's going to be a minute until I get this in the actual car. But yeah, I kind of just want to do something quick here. Um, maybe help some people uh, build a standalone. I'll catch you in the outro here and kind of explain a little more to you. All right, y'all. So that's about it for this wiring on this thing. Um, at least until we get it in the car and uh, start installing some stuff because we'll probably have to tape some stuff out of the way and everything like that. But that'll be when everything's going in the car. It's good enough for right now as, as it is. Um, like I, I was kind of trying to say, uh, I tried to dumb this down a little bit as much as I could um, because, you know, when you get into wiring and stuff like that, it gets very intimidating. It takes a very long time and it's boring. Um, but if you go step-by-step step and follow that lt1swap.com, the directions on there, I'm telling you, use there. That guy's got pinouts of the ECUs for Gen 4 and Gen 3. Um, he's got uh, wiring schematics. He's got that step-by-step -step thing on there and a bunch of other stuff. So like, you know, even part numbers and stuff like that you can use. What I recommend on there, what I kind of did was, um, if you go to that description or that whole PDF file of where they have the to make the standalone from the truck harness, I would go to about page 20, 21 and kind of stop there. And if you're going to, like, this is only if you're going to use the Michigan Motorsports Harness. Stop at that page 2021 and then start following the directions of Michigan Motorsports. And that'll kind of guide you in the right path of getting that harness installed to the truck harness. Now, you're still going to have to take your ECU and everything to get um, VATS deleted, um, you know, your front O2 or your rear O2s deleted and all that, and your EGR and all that kind of stuff deleted. Um, because the EVAT or the, uh, VATs and everything, that's going to lock you out and it's not going to let the thing start. You have to get all that stuff deleted so that you, you pretty much, you would take your ECU to a tuner and be like, I need this turned into a standalone ECU. So like I said, 
page 20, 21, stop there, start following Michigan Motorsports directions. And it should be step-by-step step also there. The, the directions on Michigan Motorsports don't really have like a lot of pictures. But just follow the wire colors and connect them that way and you'll be fine. Um, kind of getting close on this thing to hopefully get it in the car here soon. I bought the motor plates for it. Um, I bought the ICT, the ICT billet ones where they adapt it to the old style clamshells for like the small block Chevys because there's already mounts in the car. And uh, if you've ever changed mounts, I think I've said this in my last video, if you ever change mounts in a third gen F body, it's a pain in the butt. So we're going to use those that are in the car until they break. And then we'll deal with it then. Like I said, future Rudy problem. Um, so we got that. I got the adapter. There's like a spacer adapter for... Um, like TH350s and 400s to LSs. Um, I have that little adapter. Still haven't figured out anything that I got to do for the torque converter on this thing with the flywheel and stuff. So we'll look into that. Probably going to have to get a torque converter. Um, the oil pan on these 5.3s kind of hang down a little bit too low in these third gens. Um, but for right now, for us just getting it running, we're not too worried about that. Unless we find like a deal on a fourth gen F body pan or something like that, then we're just going to stick with this thing. Um, I got to get the gaskets for it. It's the Christmas holiday, Christmas season. Um, you know, got to spend money on your family and stuff like that, but don't make yourself broke. Try to make somebody happy. Don't do that. Um, so, but we're getting there pretty close, which is awesome because we want to see how this thing runs before our pull apart warranty runs out. Um, I also got figured out something to block off this EGR plate um, or this EGR hole because the plate that they want you to buy is like $36 or something like that. I literally went and bought a, a rubber expanding freeze plug that I'm going to put in there and hopefully that holds. So um, just trying to do stuff on the cheap because I don't want to spend a bunch of money. Like I said, holiday season. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you got some information out of that. Um, like I said, I try to make it simplified as possible. Um, if you don't know how to solder or anything like that, there's a bunch of videos out there. Go ahead and learn because it's a great thing to know how to do. If not, go buy those solder stick connections and use those. Those seem to work great. People always talk about those. Links will be in the description for those two websites for Michigan Motorsports and LT1 Swap. Um, but for now, we're taking a break for the holiday season. We'll see what we can get done on this. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas to you guys. Happy holidays. I hope it's a good one for you and your family. Take it easy.